Hello there, very good morning to you watching Create and Craft. I'm Debbie and this is Jenny. Hello! <laughs> this is terrified, Jenny. You've got to be very... I know you might be sitting there with no clothes on watching oh. me. Now, this is my very first quilting classroom. OK, so this might go a little pear-shaped. <laughs> well, let's see okay, what we've got. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. Um, now, then, a lot of you, an awful lot of you, have already ordered your fabrics ready, but we do have a few pieces left for you, and we've got four choices. Um, the first item here is the fat quarters. Now, to be honest, we don't have very many of these left. So if going forward you want to create the whole of the quilt, you won't have enough. No, you won't. I mean, that's, that's only to make the blocks we're doing today right. or the project. Okay? okay. You've only got enough there for the four blocks I'm going to be demonstrating today and or making the project. If you want to make the quilt, and the easiest way to do it is by all the fabric at the same time, really, because you then got it. And there's no problem with colourways changing, because sometimes, even in the best regulated society, fabric that you think is going to be exactly the same might not be. But it's a sampler quilt, does it really matter? So, okay. you know, the choice is yours. Um, well, I'm kind of expecting we're going to sell out of these this morning. They're only £14.99. £13.49 uh, for club members, 259096. Same deal with the second uh, selection of colours that we have. Again, we don't have very many of these left because it's been very busy on the website since we first launched this last week. If you want to go for the blues and greens, £13.49 again, 259097. But again, you won't have enough to make the whole quilt. So you're going to need to go for these. So this is enough to make the whole of the, the quilt. The whole quilt. There's five metres of fabric there, slightly different quantities of each one, and that will do the entire quilt. And there'll be not much wastage left, because the trouble is with fabric is you don't want to have any wastage. So I've carefully calculated the amounts, and if you do the blocks in the ways I've done the colours, it will be absolutely fine. If you change your mind, you can still be absolutely fine. OK, so that's uh, £53.99. Now, we've got FlexiPay for you as well, so you can drop that price down today to just £26.99, plus your postage. That's for club members, OK? So that's your first colour option, which is your reds and your ambers and your greens. That's two five nine. 090. The second choice of colours is a different item number, and again, you've got enough to make the whole quilt here, and we've got flexi pay again, so 26.99 plus postage for club members is all you're going to pay for these, 259107. Right, now if you have a look, um, oh, we've got the batting as well yes. for you. You won't need this till the end, no, really, not will till you? The end, not till the end. Although it's worth mm. buying if you're going to make the project, some of the projects along the way, because every time we do a classroom, we're doing a project as well. Oh, okay. So, and they can get the project as a free download on the website. Right. You go into the Create and Craft website, put Quilting Classroom into the search engine, that brings up the page with a slightly odd picture of me looking a few years younger, I have to confess. <laughs> and you've got a chance there to t click on the PDQ for the instructions for the quilting classroom, which give you the sizes and pictures uh, of the, all the stage samples, plus there is the project. And this month's project, which takes the fabrics from a fat quarter, is... Have you got the bag? Drum I've roll, got the bag. The bag. So there okay. is the bag. OK. And you can do, use, either have a plain inside with one colour one side or you can have a stripy inside. Really useful because you can put all your bits and pieces in there and tote it around. Right. Now, if you want to add that batting to your order with the large fabrics, remember you've got flexi pay, flexi basket, pay half of your completed purchase. So get it in the bag if you like. Uh, in the bag. Um, <laughs> that, that's, again, the instructions for the bag on the website on creatingcraft.tv. Now, while you're there, if you've got any emails to drop in throughout the show today, I'm imagining we're going to be inundated with emails, so we're going to save them up for the end of the show. Two of you are going to win a magazine. Yes, it's because this has been a very hectic week. I flew Tuesday back from a California quilting show. <laughs> Jet lagged, went to a Kent quilting show, the Autumn Quilt Show in Kent, persuaded them to give me two magazines. So these are the Fabrications Quilting for You, a couple of the latest magazines to go to the emails. You're not getting a book this time. Tough, you have to wait for that. <laughs> but you've got a jolly good magazine with a report by, of course, myself in it on the quilts I judged at... I forget where now, but somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So email studio at creatingcraft.tv. All of you go in the potty at the end of the show and uh, Jenny will go through all of those after the end yes. of the show and questions are going to be... Um... What I'm going to do is get questions that have come in is I won't answer them individually because that would take too long but I'll put a, a PDQ on the website because you've obviously all got internet access and there they will be answered on there. So if you had a query, give me two or three days because I'm going to have to get, answer them all and there'll be a PDQ of FAQs 
FAQs. Yes. FAQs. Frequently, frequently asked questions. Right. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Facts <laughs> and questions. I couldn't frequently, think of Frequently well. asked questions. Anyway, it'll be yes. there. Okay, all on the website. Yep. Um, just to mention, we've got some threads on the show for you as well. If you want to pop those onto your order, they're £8.99 for 10,000 yards in total, 202780. Um, anything else that you need, have a look on our website again on... Um, TV. If you need your glass head pins, we've got glass head pins for you as well. So they're worth popping on your order. Worth popping on your order because they're only £2.69 and we've got multi-line postage. I wouldn't order those on their own because your postage yeah. is more yeah. than you're paying for them. But if you put it on your order and you have Flexi Basket, you could put it into your Flexi Basket and that would be tuppence halfpenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. We've also got um, a seam ripper. That's we know we don't one. really need that. No. But sadly, I'm afraid no. we all need a seam ripper. <laughs> well, that's just one pound seven. It's 259488. And then finally, we've got uh, we've got some little scissors for yep. you as well, which are £4.49, and that's 259479 as your item number. So some nice bits and bobs to pop on your order. Um, right, your time to get ready, Mrs. Okey dokey. And I'll Adam. give the details of the website again with all of the details of everything that we have for you. Remember, it's studio at createandcraft.tv if you have any questions in the show. Uh, but it's going to be um, over to Jenny. With lesson one. Off you go. Right, right. This is it. Okay, folks. You are going to learn four blocks today. We're going to go through them relatively fast, but not so fast you don't understand how they're done. I'm going to start off with block number one, which is called rail fence. And here it is in the red and green option. And you can see it behind me on the blue and yellow quilt. It's the top one in the top left corner. No, it's not. I'm telling porky pies. They've hung it's in the very bottom corner down the bottom there. Now, this particular design is formed from four strips stitched together. I've cut four one and a half inch wide strips from each of four fabrics. Now, if you've bought the full meters for the quilt, I've cut literally right the way across the fabric, and you're cutting your strips from one side to the other across the fabric. Nobody is going to cut their strips down the fabric, are you? No, miss. So strips are cut across the fabric. If you're using fat quarters and you're making the project blocks, then you will cut your strips across the material from one side to the other, and you'll end up with shorter bands when you piece them together. Move number one is to obviously cut your fabric. Now, whether you've got fat quarters or whether you've got large pieces of fabric, I would suggest you give it a good press first. Press it first. Try not to press things after you've pressed them, because after you've cut them, because they'll stretch. So press fabric. I like to fold my fabric, so you fold it so the selvages are together. I then fold it in half again, matching the selvages up with a center fold. This will give me a relatively short length of fabric to cut across. Using the True Cut ruler, and the reason why I like this is A, it's flexible and doesn't break. B, I can hold the fabric through the um, holes on the ruler. C, it's got a nice ridge down the side here upon which I can fit the rotary cutter. Now, the rotary cutter, the one I tend to use, is the 45 millimeter one. It's the one in the middle. You can buy a larger one of 60, you can buy a smaller one of 28. I tend to use the medium one. I like the cutter because it's ergonomic, good word for a Sunday morning, and you can also personalize it, so it's quite nice. I can have Jenny in here, and then just to remind me, I can put my husband on the other side. Well, one of them. Helps if you can remember which one you're actually married to at the time. Once you've got your fabric there, lay the ruler on the top, and I would slide the ruler right to the very end of the material. You do not want to waste any fabric whatsoever. Take the guard off the cutter, put the cutter so it fits on the groove of the ruler, and start cutting a bit before. If you're not careful, you'll miss the first bit if you start too far in, so start cutting a bit before. One good, firm press up the ruler and off the fabric at the other end and at this stage you put the guard back on that cutter. Nobody, I get seriously cross about this and you get the death stare, ever leaves their cutter unguarded because believe you me if you cut yourself with that blade it bleeds like there's no tomorrow. Right, having cut yourself a nice strip you then chuck it on the floor so the floor manager has to pick it up afterwards, mm. don't worry I will. We've now got a neatly cut end. Now I have a choice of two things, well three things actually, two I could either walk around the table and cut from the other side, I could turn the fabric round, or I could turn the board round to make the next cut. I'm going to turn the fabric round, so fabric round. 
we want a one and a half inch strip and on this ruler it's clearly marked there is your one there's your one and a half so what I'm going to do now is put the ruler so the one and a half inch line is exactly on that neatly cut edge of the fabric and there it is. If you want to stop this ruler from sliding, indeed if you want to stop any ruler from sliding, there are some very good little grip discs that go on there, the true cut grip discs. Take your cutter, remember we start cutting a bit before, push firmly up the edge of the ruler, up, up, up. Now should you pause sort of mid cut? The great thing about this cutter is it's on the little guide. It won't fall off, and you will get a more accurate cut. So keep on going to the end. There, off the end, and there's your strip. Now, to do this particular design, fence and rail, or rail fence, call it what you will, you're going to need, as I said, four colours. If you're using fat quarters, you will have to cut two strips in each colour from each of the fat quarters, plus you will need a little tiny weeny bit about five and a half inches long to cut the remaining section. Because what is going to happen is all these strips are going to be stitched together to form a very long band, or two short bands and a little bit, and it gets cut into squares, and that's how the design is formed. Now. This particular design can be done on the machine, or if you must, it can be done by hand. Should you do it by hand, though, it will pay you to cut the things into the correct lengths, four and a half inches. You'll see how the thing works in the end. And if you are going to do it by hand, using something like a quilter's quarter, which is a quarter of an inch ruler, and a pencil will allow you to draw an accurate seam allowance along the edge of the fabric. Because if you want the blocks to fit for the sampler quilt, these blocks, when you are done, need to measure 12 and a half inches from one side to the other. Now, there are ways around it, and we can fudge it a little bit, but it would be nice if we could be relatively accurate. So by hand, you could draw a line. Now, on the sewing machine, you very often have, on your sewing machine, a quarter of an inch foot. Now, I'm going to have to sit down on a cushion because I'm too low on this chair. This little machine comes with, very fortuitously, because they've actually thought about it, a quarter of an inch foot. And there is your quarter of an inch foot. Nice little foot. And where the quarter of an inch is, it's just here. It's not on the edge of the foot. It's just in a bit. So to change the foot, raise the presser foot. They clip on and clip off very simply. So take it off there. Put the next one on. There we go. You, you can have your sewing machine straight in front of you. You don't have to sit squint. All right, this is, I don't sit like this ordinarily. Having put the foot on, as Miss Scissors has gone to, there they are. Take your two strips. Now, regardless of how you're going to do it, you'll need to lay the colours out in the order that you want. And on my particular strip, I've got the whitey one, I've got the yellow one, I've got the dark blue, and I've got the green one. And what I usually do is stitch them together in sets of two, and then I join the two pairs together. But just to demonstrate how the sewing goes. Now, I would thread up my machine with thread that matched the fabrics, sort of. I wouldn't use black. I'm using black so you can see where I'm sewing. To start, line your two strips up so they line up at the end. Stick it underneath the machine and you'll want regular stitch length and you need to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If your machine doesn't do a quarter of an inch, you could see if you could make it do it by moving the needle, or of course you could always measure carefully and work out where the quarter of an inch was. But this machine's got a very nice little foot. Now I'm not going to sew all the way down here because that'll be boring, but if I just demonstrate a short length, you of course will sew the entire lot. So I've got the edge of my presser foot on the edge of the fabric. I'm going to set off in orderly fashion, chomp my way all the way down. Now this particular little machine has a speed control and I can go as fast or as slow as I like. And you go all the way down to the end. Now something I like to do at the end of any line of stitching is rather than sew off the machine, sew off the fabric and just pull it out from the back of the machine, is I will sew onto a small scrap of fabric. It's called a thread saver. It's not my idea, it's an old tailoring trick. You used to call it a monkey or a donkey up in the north of England. And really, what this is going to do is it's going to save all those lengths of thread either end. It saves a fortune in thread, and thread can be expensive. So once you have sewn down the first two bits, take 
another two colours. And again, I'm only going to sew a short section because you don't want to watch me sewing all the way down the entire thing. So take the next two colours, again, line them up on the end where the selvages are. Underneath the sewing machine, press a foot. Sew off the little scrap. Okay, he will remain attached. I don't know why they're always male, but they always are. Down the bottom, down the bottom. And when you reach the end of the strip of fabrics, and again, I'm going to cut this off short, you can either use a second scrap or you can cut the one off from the beginning and ram it on the end of it. There we go. Like that. And believe you me, this eases your sewing. It saves a lot of thread. The thread doesn't jump out the needle. This machine does have a needle threader. But it doesn't jump out the take-up lever and it doesn't get muddled up in the bottom bobbin either. It's a neat trick. Once you've done both sets of strips, as in sets of two, so we've got two of those there, and we've got the other two, then you would join the two together in the right colour order to get the striped band. Now you're going to need about 42 inches of striped band. Once you've got the striped band, it will pay you to press your seams open and flat. Now, what is quite a nice little iron, and I like doing these days, is using the Clover Mini Iron. It's a really nice small iron for just getting into those little seams. If you use too big an iron, and if you use steam, you can actually damage the fabric and stretch it. And we don't want to stretch it. Once you've got your strip stitch together, either one long one or two short ones and a little bit, these need to be cut into nine squares. Now, ideally, this should measure, this is in an ideal world, an ideal world heart joke, which is an ideal world, these should measure actually four and a half inches. They may not. You will need to measure the band, and whatever the width of the band is, that's the size of square you cut out, you see. Technically, it should measure four and a half. If it measures four and a half, pat on the back, congratulate yourself on your seam allowance. I'm going to initially move the ruler to the end of the fabrics there. I've checked it measures four and a half inches. Cut off all those messy bits up there. Get rid of them. Flip the band round, and I'm now going to cut nine four and a half inch squares from this band. So reposition the ruler. There is the four and a half. And one. And two. And three. Pace, keep your ruler nice and flat. You, of course, will do it amazingly carefully. Put it on there. And four. And if you're using fat quarters, you'll get four out of the two long bits. Don't throw the other pieces away because it might be useful. Chop the other band up, and again, once more, remove the selvages off the end. You can always hang on to their bit. They're very useful for use with the crazy template. I don't waste anything if I can possibly hang on to it. And again, number five, number six, number seven. This is just proving I can count to nine. Number eight. Sorry, that was number eight. Perhaps I can't count after all. That's number there, and the last one is out of this little bit. Those of you working with the full fabrics from the full quilt won't need to have these little bits. It's only for these doing the fat quarters. Trim it off, flip it round, and cut your last remaining square. There it is. Right, I've now got, and again, I'll put these on the floor. I promise to pick them up afterwards. My nine different, nine squares. And they get arranged like this. If you put one down in front of you with perhaps the lightest colour on the top, the next one goes down with the light colour to the left. The next one goes down with the light colour to the top. That is the end of the first row. Coming to the second row, you reverse. You go left colour first, light colour to top. Left colour first, and then the last row, you will have light to the top. Left, light. And if you look at it, you get a series of steps. And that is the design that we are making. Now you can play with these and you can turn them round. If you found that thinking of doing those small pieces was difficult, there is an option. I would now sew these together like this. I'd sew two together, making a set of two. I'd sew two together and I'd join that set to that set. And it'd be really rather nice if your seams lined up in the middle, but buttons actually work quite well. Then I'd join those two together and put it on the end. And then I'd join a row of three. 
Now, I like to do it like that rather than three rows, simply because if you do three rows, you've got a nasty junction there. If I am going to join them together, I'll simply take these two, put them together, right sides together, underneath the sewing machine, quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down. Zap the speed up. Then I take the next pair, and it pays, folks, to lay it out, think about it, because it's one of these designs that you can get ever so wrong. When you get to the bottom, onto your little scrap of fabric, etc., etc. I would then open them out, put them back, and make sure I'd got the design right, because this is where it can go hopelessly wrong. <laughs> Believe you me. These two get joined to there, again, lining up the seams. Now, what I like to do with the seams is I like to have my seams open and flat. I think it makes for a better patchwork. So once you've joined those two together, I join those two together, pop it, on, pop it on the end, and then have a row of three. Now, that's rail fence as shown on the quilt. But in the Create and Craft Club magazine, there is another design which will give you a cushion that looks a little bit like that one. And that is done very simply by just taking four colours, cutting two inch strips of each, making a big enough band, cutting yourself out squares, whatever size the band is, you cut out squares of that width and you simply put them together. One would go there, one would go there, two more go there. And full instructions for that are actually in the Create and Craft Club magazine. So it's a good way to, to join the club is join that and you'll get the magazine. Okay, block number one is rail fence. So it's formed from four strips of one and a half inches. Using the same one and a half inches, I'm going to show you how to do log cabin. Now, there is the log cabin block. These are four log cabin blocks put together. In the center, I've cut a two and a half inch square, and I'm using one and a half inch strips round it. Now, you can do the log cabin design this size, but if it does phase you, and you thought, oh my goodness me, I'll never cope with all those small pieces, why not just do a bigger version and just do one block. Now, if you are going to do log cabin, the technique is exactly the same. It doesn't matter the size, you make it. How log cabin is done is you will need a square for the center. Now, using the big design, I've got a four and a half inch one. The smaller design uses a two and a half inch one. So you need a four and a half inch square for the center. And that's where you would cut from your strip a four and a half inch one. Or you could use the square board. And if I wanted to cut just a four and a half inch square from my fabric, I'd take my fabric, open the fabric out. Let's find a corner. This is using the whole meterage for the quilt. Take my true cut square, pop it in one corner and cut slightly more than a four and a half inch. You have to get round the right way to begin with. It does help. So I'm going to sort of hack a lump off that's slightly bigger than four and a half inches. Ruler goes on there, cut up one side, and again this ruler also has the same little ledge on it, which makes it impossible to fall off the ruler. Get rid of my fabric, flip the square round to 180 degrees, bring the ruler in from the left-hand side. Now do bear in mind, I am right-handed. Left-handed girls and boys, you will have to reverse the instructions. Guard on there, I've now got four and a half inches lined up in both directions, there and there. Move it over a bit. Get it right, Jennifer. And then hand on the ruler up there and along the top. And that will give you easily a four and a half inch square. Right, how do we do log cabin? So you need four and a half inch square for the middle or two and a half, it doesn't matter. You then need two and a half strips if you're doing the big one or one and a half if you're doing the little one. Take strip number one. Now, what I like to do with the very first strip is, first of all, trim off the selvages. You can either do that with scissors or with a rotary cutter. And from the first strip, I will cut a length that's the same measurement as the block, i.e. four and a half inches in this case, or one and a half in the other case. So ruler on there, cut. You only need to do measure one to begin with in this method of doing log cabin. Down to your sewing machine. Sit down, that's it. It's my big cushion, that's it. Take your strip and the first piece of fabric goes right side down, okay? 
<laughs> do what you get it right side down and lined up with one corner of the square sew off your little piece of fabric down the first side all the way down now when you get to the bottom you can rescue your small scrap there stick it on the bottom there take the log cabin block what happens now is it gets turned a quarter turn going anti-clockwise that way and what I would do at this stage is I would just simply finger press the seam now this is where the seams on log cabin always go towards the outside edge they go that way right that was the first strip now notice it's at the top I'm now going to take the next piece of fabric make sure I'm starting with the end that I've already cut a piece off I don't want the selvage because the last thing you want is to end up with sort of made in something in the middle of your quilt lay the strip on top so it lines up with the top of the block and the rest of the strip hangs out the bottom underneath the sewing machine now you can pin it in place if you wish I'm not using pins simply to save a bit of time but please feel free to pin the glass headed pins are great because they really do go through the fabric so a little way down the strip stop pick up your scissors and cut this strip off exactly flush with the square underneath and you sew all the way down the strip right down to the bottom when you get the bottom sew off the bottom onto your little scrap you can always use a second scrap cut behind the presser foot we've now got the first color on you've got L for log cabin okay L for log cabin you only usually in log cabin do two strips the same color so my next color choice is going to be the yellow and where did I put the yellow there they are and again because I'm doing the big one it's a two and a half inch wide strip once more cut the selvage off so cut selvage off there and turn your block a quarter of an inch and the yellow one goes down this side so yellow goes on top there underneath your sewing machine line it all up pin it in place if you like if you're hand sewing girls then you could draw your quarter of an inch in and boys sorry now sew down a little way and cut off it's much easier to sew down a little way and then cut off rather than sew right the way down because then you've got to move everything out of the machine it gets highly complicated well more complicated slight exaggeration there to the bottom sew off and on to your little thread saver so that was next color onto there stop cut open out right the color next color goes down here to form another L so yellow goes on top line up with the top there stick it underneath the presser foot sew off your little scrap try and keep things as square as possible now if you slightly overcut as I did line up the end of your strip with the top of the block and just check it's as parallel as possible to that nice center square try and keep things straight right so off the little strip down the piece of fabric and let me show you what happens if you forget to cut because you know we all get blonde or in my case dyed red haired moments you sew down to the bottom there oh dear I've forgotten to cut oh that's a bit of a what's it oh I have to take it all out now then I get to cut the thread and then I'm going to have to cut that it's considerably easier to do it cutting before you reach the end right so second color has gone on now we're going to use the third color and the third color will go down this side and can you see I'm forming L's for log cabins as the quilting classroom series goes on when we've made this sample quilt we might do many more exciting things with a log cabin because this is very basic right strip goes lined up with the top of the fabric keep it as parallel as possible set off from the sewing machine sew down don't forget to cut I cut when you're about three four inches from the bottom don't be too quick to cut because sometimes you can sort of wobble around a bit so cut when you nearly get there all the way down to the bottom there find your little scrap there's another one so off that onto that cut turn it round open it out and again finger press the seams if at times you felt you wanted to give it a good iron this is where the little clover iron is very good because you can just press along the seams there but don't do it on your cutting mat it pays to do it on an ironing pad right last strip of green last strip of green goes down here and you can see how the block develops so you start off with the middle you add two strips of one color 
Then you add two strips of another colour, two strips of another one, and keep working round constantly in the same direction. And when I've done two bits of green, I'll do two bits of blue. And it'll end up looking something like sushi. Let's get to the end. Take this strip, stitch it off, stick it underneath there. It'll end up looking something like this one. Because you then finish it off with two strips of blue. Now that's the big block. Now ideally it should measure 12 and a half inches. Uh, on the PDF that you can get off the website, I do suggest that if, when you're getting towards the last row, it's not looking as though it's going to be 12 and a half inches, you could always adjust the size by putting a bigger one on, three inch one, and then cutting it back. The nice thing about the true cut square is that it's exactly a 12 and a half inch square. And if you found your block was a little bit too big, you can always cut it back. Mine, of course, is absolutely perfect. Ha! So she measuring it quickly and taking it away so you can't notice any discrepancies. Now, if you're going to do the log cabin with the big pieces, that is what you do. If you're going to do the small pieces, you'd end up with considerably smaller blocks. And here they are. So this is a two and a half inch centre, one and a half inch pieces, sewn in exactly the same way. The nice thing about these things you can do is you can arrange them in a variety of ways. I could put my four blocks with the blue together in the middle. There we go. Or I could put my four blocks together with the green together in the middle. Let's see if we can get that. Great, and turn them around. And there's the green in the middle there. That's it. Do you know something? I think I've, I think I've made a mistake. Just to prove I'm human, that block's wrong. <laughs> I thought I got them all completely right. Can you see why that block's wrong? You can have a good laugh at my expense. The blue one shouldn't be there. The blue one should be there. Now, that was sadly probably doing it in my hotel bedroom after a long day at the quilting show. You shouldn't do that, folks. You should have a fresh start in the mornings. So, sorry about that. Anyway, there are a wide variety of different ways you can play with these things. You could have all the greens in the middle, blues in the middle, or you can arrange them how you like. When you come to sew them together, sew two together into a pair, two together into a pair, join it across the centre. And with luck, it should measure 12 and a half inches. So that's your log cabin. Next block, very simple. This one I just call squares because I really couldn't think of any other way of calling it. I think it does have a design and someone's bound to email me in and say, ooh, it's called a such and such. To do this, you're going to need four, uh, four and a half inch squares in yellow, one four and a half inch square in the tan, and two and a half inch squares in your cream or your green. If you're doing it in the blue color version, then how I had it in the blue colour version is it looks like this. And we've got blue in the middle, four yellow ones, and these are all four and a half inch squares. These are two and a half, these are two and a half, etc., etc. How you would join the block together is not difficult, but it's a very good block for checking your piecing to see if you are accurate. Because if you lay the block out, the yellow one goes there, and the yellow one goes there, and the yellow one goes there, and one final yellow one goes over there. The blue one goes in the middle. There we go. And up in the corner here, we have two greens and two creams. Now, I've arranged them so that the green one goes there, there, and there, and then cream goes in between. But you could always switch it round. You don't have to have it like this. This is a delight of patchwork. You could do what you like. So these little squares go in the corners, one there, one there. And how you would sew the design together is not exactly difficult. I would join my four squares together to form a larger square, like this. And to do that, I would join two together, using quarter inch seam allowance, two together, and then join that set to that set. So you get the completed piece. Pressing your seams open and flat. Now, I know there's a lot of argument about this, and we'll come to this on another classroom as to why I do this and why sometimes I don't. To make the block, you would make four pieces like that. One goes there, one goes there, one goes there, and one goes there. And it pays, folks, to make certain you get the colours where you want them. Uh, very easy to have your block like that. So you could do a Jennifer's log cabin mistake to it. Think about how they go. How you would sew them together is exactly how I sewed the first block, is I would stitch two together, two together, form a block of four, 
put two more together to make a row of six, and then join those three to match up. And that is as simple as it, I've just shown you. It is squares. And the delight about this, or what we're trying to do, is to see if, if your cutting is accurate, then this block will fit that block. Right, there we have squares. Somebody email me in with its actual name, because I can't remember it for the life of me. And that's what it looks like when you're done. The squares. And if you do it in the other colourway, it could look like that. Now, the last block in today's classroom, again, tests your piecing. The last block, this is something called the single Irish chain. And I've got one here where I've used the heart template to apply a heart in the middle. The block itself consists of a six and a half inch square for the middle and two and a half inch squares for the green and the yellow. But in order to make the block the right size, the yellow will creamier one there is not a uh, sorry, these are three inch squares, not two and a half inch squares. The yellow and the green are three inch, not two and a half. If you scribble it down, cross it out, write down the right measurement. The creamy one in the middle is three that way and two and a half the other way. So three inch squares for these, three by two and a half for that. Lay the design out. And here we have it. We've got my six. I'm completely wrong on this one. This is a seven and a half inch square for the center, right? Let's all start again on this one. Seven and a half inch square for the middle. Write that down. You then need three inch greens. I'm getting, it's all this hard work I've had to do. And three inch yellows. And you need of the creamy one, it is to be two and a half inches that way and three inches that way. Lay the design out. I had the yellow ones in the corner and the green one there. And the other green one there, and then this oblong in the middle. And then you put the other ones down in the corners here. One goes there, and one goes there, and one goes here. That's it, and one goes there. There we go, nearly finished. And one goes over there. And don't forget, if you've got any queries, you can always send me an email. And your oblongs go in the middle, the two and a halfs by threes, three inch square, three inch square, two and a half by three goes there. Now, when it comes to sewing it together, it is not difficult. You sew it together in strips. You never in the patchwork world sew round corners. So what I will actually do is I will stitch these three pieces together to make one strip, like that. And now I will do the same on the other side, stitch those three pieces together to make one strip. You see removing that at the same time? There. Again, pressing the seams if you can, open and flat. Having stitched the three strips together, you stitch that bit to that bit onto the middle, making a larger panel. We then join all five together, either end, making a nice long strip. And this piece will fit that, that, and that when you sewn them together, providing you cut it out properly and you did a correct seam allowance. Okay? Very simple to do. Just let me show you rapidly how you stitch that on. Lay it down the side. To the sewing machine, quarter of an inch seam allowance, whip your way down it, keep your seams open and flat if you can. This one's got pressed over. The trouble is, heaving all this stuff around, things get in the muddle. Right down one side, make sure it fits. There's something in the patchwork world called easing, a uh, technical term, basically it means give it a jolly good tug, push or a pull to make it fit. When you get to the bottom, collect your little scrap. So off that, onto that. You learn nothing from this quilting classroom. That little scrap's useful. I would press the seam open and flat using, say, the clover mini iron. Other one goes down to the side, underneath there. Stitch off that, all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And onto your little thread saver. Stitch it out the back there. Stick it under that. Cut. There. And if your seam allowances are correct, my friends, this piece should fit that piece a treat. And there you are, I can smirk slightly because it will. When you put on the other two sides, that's when, if you like, you can play around with the middle. Now, I felt that this block was basically a little bit sort of vacant in the middle, and I felt it needed something. And one idea could be to put the a heart in the middle. You know, if you're making the quilt for somebody that you love, why not have a heart? 
And if you are going to do a heart, then the heart template is really rather nice. Now, there are a variety of ways of using the heart. You could take some heat and bond and use heat and bond, put a piece of heat and bond onto the back of your fabric, and then use the heart template to draw a heart on it. And there is your heart template drawn on there. When it comes to drawing a heart template on, if you take the heart template, pop it onto the fabric, find your sharp pencil, which has probably gone totally walkabout around here. Where's my sharp pencil gone to? Like everything, there it is. You need a nice sharp pencil. One of these is jolly useful. Pop the heart template on and just make a mark of the beginning and end of the heart. It's a darker line running down the middle here. Round there to there. Flip the heart template over, replace it on the little marks. And I think the nice thing about this heart is it gives you a really good heart shape. Lovely design. Once you've done that, if you then cut it out carefully and on the lines all the way around using your small sharp scissors, cut it out. That's it. You will do it beautifully carefully. I'm just going to whip round it a bit quick because we don't want to run out of time. Now, I'm using the heart template. You could put anything you like. I mean, why not explore what the slice fabric does? Now, that was a bit amazing bit of kit, that. So take that off there. To get the paper off, if you give it a little bit of a wriggle, pull the paper off the back there. That's it. Find your block. Where's my block gone to? There we go. Get rid of these things. These I did on the slice fabric. I thought, rather a good thing. There's your heart. Pop it in the middle. Putting this on your ironing template and just press it in place. There we go. That's it. That's it. And I think what you might like to show, see in a minute, is how the slice fabric works. Now, please don't press directly onto your cutting mat. It just makes it life slightly easier than rather moving away from the table onto the cutting mat. The slice fabric does a lot of all sorts of different designs. And we're going to now have a look and see what the slice fabric actually does. When you give a gift, do you think about how long it will be remembered? Does it have a personal touch? Is it something your family will smile about for generations? Because a gift can be more than an object. It can be a lasting memory. Create a gift to be remembered. Introducing The Slice, the fabric cutting tool that defines your style. So you could use, say, the heart template and make a heart and then press it on. Now, if you're going to do that, then you'll need to hold it in place with some form of satin stitch or some form of stitching around the edge there. Now, if I were going to machine this on, I would use satin stitch. Now, please, please do not use your quarter of an inch foot for doing any form of satin stitching. And the reason why is there's one small hole in the quarter of an inch foot and if you dare to move your needle, you will end up with the needle breaking. And every time you break your needle by hitting the foot, you could upset the timing on the machine. So go to another foot that's got a nice wide slot in the middle. And preferably, you want your applique foot, which will have a cutaway underneath at the back there. Now, in my little bag of bits here, I will have an applique foot. Jolly good little machine, this. It comes with all that you need for doing just about every sewing project. And I was really pleased to see that it had the quarter of an inch foot in it. Where's my applique foot? There's my applique foot. And there's a neat little box there where you can stuff all the pieces in. Come out of the way. Get them. Right, this is the applique foot. And the reason why it's called the applique foot is it has a cutaway bit at the back. And the reason for the cutaway bit at the back is to allow the thick raised satin stitching to pass cleanly underneath the presser foot. So you pop that one on. Set your machine to do a zigzag, and on this little machine, it's very simple to set. I just simply move it along using the buttons at the side here. Decide on how wide a zigzag you want. I wouldn't go too wide. I'm going to go to about, say, four on this machine. You want to take your stitch length down to pretty tiny. Now, if you've not done satin stitch before, don't go too close. Don't have it really tight, because you might find that you'll be a bit nervous and the whole thing will jam up. So don't have the stitching absolutely a solid line of stitching. Have it slightly apart. You'll find it'll move easier. 
I would start at the bottom of the heart here, get the middle of the presser foot on the edge of the fabric, and how you're going to go is you're going to go into the fabric and over the edge, into the fabric and over the edge, into the fabric and over the edge. And if you are doing any satin stitching, you want to run that machine nice and fast because you'll get a smoother line of stitch out of it. I'm just going to whip round here. So I'm going into the fabric and over the edge, into the fabric and over the edge, into the fabric and over the edge, round the bend. Just keep moving the material. Try not to stop. Round the bend. It's easy, actually, if you sew a bit nearer to the machine, but never mind. Round the bend. Here we go. This machine does a neat job. It will be better in, fa in thread that matches your fabric, not black. And then into the V. When you get to the V of the heart, if you stop with the needle into the point of the heart, in my case on the left-hand side there, raise the presser foot, slightly readjust the presser foot at an angle, and then set out again. And that will get you quite nicely round the top of the heart. So that is one way of getting it down there. Let's take that out there and you can have a look. And there is your satin stitch around the edge. If that phased you and you didn't want to do that, or perhaps you were working it by hand, there's no reason why you can't go for the old-fashioned method and actually use a card template. Draw round your, your heart template onto a piece of card. Pin the card to the back of a scrap of material, which is why you never throw anything away. Cut round the template, leaving about half an inch, all the way around. And the only place where you want to nick it is into the heart itself, just into there. Don't cut right into the heart, because otherwise it frays. Continue cutting round. I tend to allow more rather than less. It's much easier to fold it over the card with more material. Fold it over the card, and at the end here, bring the sides together in a little sort of point, and then flatten it. Tack, or baste, depending on which country you're in. You know, the Americans call tacking basting. With a large stitch, the fabric to the card. Now, don't panic, the card will come out. Because how I would apply it, I take my block, pop it in the middle of the block, Stitch it round the entire way round the block with a nice little slip stitch using navy blue if that were the colour of my heart uh, thread. And then to get it out, I would turn the block over and trim away just inside the stitching all the fabric at the back and pull the card out through the hole. So that's how you can get your heart or your flower, and you could use anything you like. On the quilt behind me, I used a sort of tulip design. And that's the block in the middle there. Let me get the camera to go to the tulip design in the middle. So I use the slice fabric on the blue and yellow quilt. I just use the heart template on the red and yellow one. You can do what you like. Hey, come on, you're the artist. Now, these are the blocks that we've been doing today. We've got some very different blocks for you for next week. So just running through them very rapidly, we've got rail fence or fence and rail, which is formed from one and a half inch strips unless you want to go for the easier option, which is this, which was two inch strips. Then we did log cabin, and we did log cabin either the small version with a two and a half inch center, one and a half inch strips all the way around, or you could have gone for the larger version. Where's my larger version gone to? Oh dear, it's vanished. No, it's probably on the floor, there it is. Larger version, which was a four and a half inch square and two and a half inch strips. Then we did squares, which was four and a half inch squares there, two and a half inch ones there. Then we did the single Irish chain, seven and a half inch square in the middle, three inches here, three inches there, and this is a rectangle of two and a half by three. All the sizes and the cutting instructions are actually on the website. Now that's this week's classroom. Let's show you what we've got coming up for the next time. Well, we've got, um, again, on the uh, on the website, you've got all of the details for everything that you've been doing in this yes, show. Yes, so in coloured pictures as well, I know. Yes, I'll have you know. So if you've just tuned in, you think, oh, I've missed it now. Um, not necessarily. You can go on the website. When are you back again for the next one? The next one is on the 25th of November. 25th. So make sure you press record yes, before then. Yes. And, set it all and we're going to be doing... Where's, where's your blocks, Mrs? I gave you the blocks to hold. There, go on, quick, run, run. I haven't decided on the projects. You have to wait for the project. Right, this has been an extremely busy month. And between now 
on the next time we meet, okay? I'm going to a place called Puddle Ducks next weekend, and then I'm going up to Scotland where I'm the entertainment for the WI, and then I'm going to Florida, and then I'm going somewhere else, and then between I've got to make the samples for this. Are you feeling tired? All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to go home tonight, and I'm just going to snuggle up with my husband, and I'm just going to say, Oh, now which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> Snuggle up with the right one. Are these I the will ones? do. Yes, they are. Yes. Lovely. Now, these are the blocks we're going to be doing next time. Is we're going to be having a look at how to do 5440 fight or flight. And you all will know how to do the little squares on the corners, but don't worry, we'll run through it again. We'll look at doing the Dutchman's puzzle. And it always amuses me this because sometimes they go around one way, the pinwheel, sometimes it goes around the other way. Is this the Dutchman's puzzle? And we'll look at doing Amish Friendship Star. In fact, we'll be starting with that one because that's nice and easy. And we'll also look at doing an eight-pointed star. Now, these things will require templates. Have you got... Go on, our oh, Deb. You just can't get the stars these days. Just Sh come. Oh, quick, I'm quick, coming. Quick, she's oh, coming. Come she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. There's two. There's two. Oh, right, right. Okie dokie. Now, these two go together. This is the easy angle number two and the companion angle. And they are very good for making... Half square triangles, which is, you hold that, our Debs. Yeah. The big one, the easy angle one, makes half square triangles. This one actually makes quarter square triangles, which are used on the flying goose. Okay. And on the flying goose, we've got both templates in use. So this one only was used for that, and these two could be used for this one. Now, you can use these templates to make these two designs, or you could also get another template called the Flying Goose template. Now, where's you put the Flying Goose template? There's another one somewhere. Run. She has to have a morning exercise. There is the Flying Goose template. We need to put something at the back of that, maybe, because they can't <laughs> see. Let's put it at the back of that. That'll make it easier. Now, you might say to yourself, why do I want... Can we have it? Let's go the right way around. The Flying Goose template and not by these. Well, these actually are, these are very good tools to have. That one does things at half inch intervals. These two do things at quarter of an inch intervals. And although that will do ideally for next time's classrooms, these two are also good to have because A, that is bigger, and B, it does things in quarter of an inch intervals. And there are times when you need three and a quarter, not three and a half. Okay. You know, it does make a big difference. Well, if you have a look on, uh, on the website, on creatingcraft.tv, you'll find all of the templates there. Um, and again, there will be uh, more reminders of what you're going to need for the next class. But let's give you a reminder of uh, what we've used in the show today. Yep. So we'll take through the fabrics that we've got available. Um, starting off with the fat quarters. Um, seriously, if you want these, be quick. It's probably going to be the last of the stock that you're ordering right now. So we've got five fat quarters there. Yes. 25% of the stock sold out. And they will do the four blocks and they will do the project. They will not do the quilt. Right. I mean, they'll make blocks for the quilt, but they'll not make the whole quilt. So to, to be honest, if you want to come back next month and order these to finish off the quilt, they either won't be here or the colours might be slightly different. So don't order those if you want to do the whole quilt. You need to go for the quilt bundle. Um, we've got a little bit more stock of these colours left for you, but still not a lot. Uh, that's again £13.49 for five fat quarters. So same deal, yep. one, one, yep. one project. Yep. Again, they make one project or they make four blocks. Okay, but if you want to go for the quilt, now then, this is every... I mean, you can see behind us here, yes. everything you it's, need... It's uh, 54 by 60. I think, off the top of my head. That's gorgeous. Now, yes. the, the shades may vary slightly, but that's the kind of colours that you're going to be working with. They're, they're so... I, don't I, even I like it. them. I really like the colours. That, that's, that's my sort of colour. But I like the blue and yellow. <laughs> this is warm and friendly, but you, perhaps you're doing something for a boy. Yeah. Then you obviously miss the flowers off, because you could use a slice fabric to do trains and things, because it does trains. Um, and you could use the blue and yellow for, the, for a boy. Or perhaps if you've got a room that's a bit sort of small, then you need won't make it look brighter and bigger the blue and yellow will work this is sort of cozy in winter that's something you can make them both <laughs> one postage if you do now we've got flexi ah, pay on these pay, yeah. yep. right. so you can split the cost into two and that's uh, two payments of 26 pounds 99 your postage will be added to your first flexi payment now as you place your order so these colors are 259090 if you want to go for the cool colors 
That's a different item number, which is 259107. And again, we've got FlexiPay, so that's £26.99 if you want for that. And if you want to go for a couple of those, then you go for as, as many as you like. But I think it's the tone of the colours that works so well, doesn't yes. it? You have yes. one that's slightly yeah. plainer, one that's very bold. You and need three that a light. Yeah. You need mediums and you need a dark. You need the accent. And so if anyone is going to buy fabrics for the, sh the quilting show, I will make sure that the actual measurements of the various colours are, I don't think we put them on the PDFs, are adjusted. Uh, you will always need a light, you will always need a dark, and then you need middle shades. Now, if you're not certain how middling the shades are, I'll tell you a really good trick. Put them on a photocopier. All right. If you put them on a photocopier, it will reduce them to shades of grey, and you can then see what is dark, what is light, and what is medium by the varying shades of grey. It's a black and white photocopier, not a colour one. <laughs> and it's a great little trick. So if you're stuck, is it light, is it dark, photocopy it. You know, the shop might look a little That's askance if you're going in and say, here, can I use your photocopier, please? But <laughs> <laughs> Never it thought works. it was a good idea. Um, you might like to pop on your order your batting as well. So this is the wadding that goes in between, yes. isn't it, that makes a yes. quilt nice yes. and dimensional. Yes. Um, and very nice to sew through too, both um, either by hand or machine. Half the stock sold out. Half the stock? Yep. It's a good, it's it's a good batting. 15 29 Big enough, obviously, to make your quilt it's worth. wadding, really. I'm wadding. Sorry. wadding. We are... British, and that is w a d d i n g wadding. <laughs> right, it's an American product, and they don't speak the same language. Believe you me. <laughs> <laughs> the nice quality as well. That's yes, it's a nice quality. That. A name that yes. you probably recognise. It's uh, two five two two five nine. Fifteen pounds twenty nine. Half of that if you put it in your flexi basket. If you want to order your slice fabric, we do have that on the show for you as well. Um, now That's that comes. Amazing bit of kit. I love mine. <sighs> Oh. Um, you're getting two design cards. There's the applique which comes with the set, and as an extra, we're going to give you the. Um, yeah, I didn't get the that world when I had a go at the Did you not? No, I was only given that box to play with. Oh. I could have done with that. Well, think, the on the quilt, is. you could use things like that bird. Yeah, because you can use every single piece yes. in the bit. If you want a yes. heart, you're going to yep. use a heart. Yes. If you want a tulip, yep. you just use the tulip. Yep. I, I, I thought it was a cracking bit of kit. And that comes nope. uh, for 20250 with the large plate as well, which is an embossing board on the back. You've got your magnetic collar, your fusible adhesive, and your repositionable spray, and your instructions, a whole and lot. three spare blades. You get the lot. For 250 All you need is your fabric. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the fabric. <laughs> um, right, oh, d draw quickly, 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 quickly. Hold the magazine, right, we're going to send one magazine to, and I will sign it, and one okay. magazine. This one's going to go to, to um, oh, Pam from Irby in Lancashire. And this is going to go to Mary from Vale of Glamorgan. So we've got one going to England and one going to Wales. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much for your emails. <laughs> um, Jenny is going to... Oh, somebody's fainted. <laughs> Some, um, no, somebody. Haven't. Jenny is going That's to go through all of the emails <laughs> after the end of the show. It may take you a while. Yes, We've had yes. loads of them. Yeah. Um, and keep looking on the website for your frequently asked questions. Don't yes. you have had a lovely yes. time? Thank, Thank you. you so. We'll see and you next see you month. on 25th. Bye-bye.